This episode of Rookie Hunter is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation. Adventures in sheep country can change your life. And as residents of BC, we're very fortunate to have three different species of sheep in our province. After attending the Wild Sheep Foundation's annual convention, Sheep Show, in Reno, Nevada, we got to see what conservation looks like firsthand. The Wild Sheep Foundation's ability to raise and put millions of dollars on the ground each year to keep these majestic animals on the mountaintops worldwide is unmatched. The Wild Sheep Family is a diverse group of people from all walks of life, and membership is open to anyone. Whether you're a seasoned pro, it's your first time on the mountain, or you just like to see sheep on the hillside, you can sign up and join today. Kelly and I are lifetime members, but you can become an annual member for just $45. You can also become a member of the Less of One Club, which is the only club you want to get kicked out of. If you've never taken a North American or international ram, you can join us in the Less of One Club for an extra $25. Plus, Less of One Club membership also includes entry into a draw for three separate doll sheep hunts, which will be given away at Sheep Show in 2019. For more information on the Wild Sheep Foundation and to become a member, head over to thewildsheepfoundation.org. Hey, welcome to episode 73 of Rookie Hunter. We're taking you guys in the backcountry on this one. We've got some trail updates as well as a conversation from a beautiful bulb over a glass and for bucks. Please support our sponsors. They support us. And in turn, we appreciate it when you guys support them. That's what keeps this show going. Become a member of the Wild Sheep Foundation. Head over to their website or find links to them from ours. And support North Arm Knives, our longtime knife sponsor. Today, if you're listening on Friday, is the final day to get yourself entered to win that knife from North Arm Knives. If you want to, you can go to the homepage on our website and get a link to our Instagram page, or just make sure you're following us. Look for the photo of the knife, and you can see all the details on how to get entered for that one. We will announce the winner next week on the show. So good luck to everybody who threw their name in the hat. Our website is therookiehunter.com. We're getting lots of awesome uh, emails from you guys and uh, lots of messages on Instagram. So keep that stuff coming, guys. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, we really want to know how your season is going. Our next big hunt is, uh, of course, our moose hunt. And that's coming up quick. So we're still getting ready and preparing ourselves and making plans for that one. Assuming we're going to have a special episode or two or three uh, that features that entire hunt and the guys that are coming along with us. So let's get into this episode. Sit back, relax, crack a cold beer. And yes, it's still sober September. So uh, grab a glass of water if you're following along with us and enjoy episode 73. Uh, Kelly here just jumped onto the trailhead and uh, I think I've hiked in about a kilometer so far and uh, it never you know ceases to amaze how heavy a 60 pound pack is um, you know you train and I could probably do a little more of that but uh, once you actually get all your shit in your pack and you take out on the trail, it's uh, not exactly light. And what I found was, it doesn't matter if you're going out for 10 days or two days, you uh, ultimately need a lot of the sleep and shelter stuff. You still need some food. Um, you know, your pack's still gonna be just as full so yeah it's nice to be back out here though this is my first time out this year um, I'm heading out first it's about mid-morning uh, Mike's gonna follow me up later in the afternoon um, he might be hiking a little bit in the dark actually um, so I'm gonna try to find a good place to set up camp. And I guess we'll take it from there. I hit the trail at about uh, 5.30 p.m. <clears throat> Kelly's already in here. We're at about 6.42 right now. And uh, I don't think I'm too far off from where he is. 
Um, hoping we can push him a little bit further than uh, where he's at, but we'll see how we're doing for sunlight and then uh, move her deeper, move deeper into the, uh, the valley here. It would be cool, get up a little bit higher and uh, hopefully find some elk up there a bit further. Still pretty low at this point, so uh, to keep on hiking and uh, should meet up with Kelly fairly soon here. Got camp set up, up on top of the ridge here. Sun's still shining. Um, definitely a beautiful uh, September day here. Um, I'm just sitting in this uh, Helinox chair that I picked up recently and this thing is pretty sweet. Sitting here glassing with my tripod. Yeah, I think tomorrow the plan is to um, pack up and head further in. Um, but it's nice to have a look and kind of see what the game plan is from here. Um, nothing too eventful. I saw a couple of does coming in and a lot of black bear sign. I know Mike has a bear tag, so um, I don't think we really plan for this to be a bear hunt, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, anyways, just uh, hanging out, enjoying the view. Cheers. Kelly, describe where we're at. Uh, we are in a bowl with a lot of uh, rugged terrain. And it looks like some good feeding grounds in front of us. And we're kind of on a glassing knob. Um, what time is it right now? Four-ish? Uh, 4.22. Yeah, so we're just waiting for the sun to go down. There's not much movement right now. Um, it's been pretty hot again today. Uh, so we're just kind of sitting here waiting for some action. As a whole, like we've never been in this area before. Mm -hmm. What are your general thoughts on making the effort to come in? Uh, it's worth it for sure. Everything seems bigger when you get like far into the back country. Yeah. Right? Like the mountains, the, the hills, the sky everything just feels bigger yeah so that's cool we have seen some animals so far um actually we saw a few does jumping out of this area right where we're, we're at right now yeah Yeah, exactly and we came back a couple hours later so we kind of set ourselves up we're waiting for the sun to go down so Let's see if we get some movement yeah in case we don't use our uh, update from the camp <clears throat> we should probably explain that the trailhead goes for a good 5k and then it goes into like a canyon and inside that canyon we ran into uh, four maybe five uh, mountain goats which was pretty cool probably within 200 yards somewhere in that area mm -hmm. um, and probably around like six o'clock in the morning or something like that so it was pretty cool to sit in there and be that close to them and watch them with the binos and get some photos and some video and stuff like that. Yeah, I could probably watch those animals all day. That's actually the first time that I've seen them in like their true setting. Like I've seen them lots like from the car or whatever, right? Yep. But that's the first time I've seen them in there true environment and when we got in there it's like oh man this is this is goat country in here yeah. and sure enough it was like 10 minutes later there's a two goats up there yeah and got some photos yeah to see him hopping around on like that steep of a cliff face mm -hmm. and they're just right in their element and it's pretty wild to watch yeah it is it's impressive yeah they're ripped too eh? oh yeah Stocky. Yeah. It's a combination between a, a deer, a horse, and a gorilla. <laughs> yeah. It's just a gorilla muscle on them. And they kind of got the stockier legs. But yeah, they're yeah. pretty cool, man. And then also in that canyon area, we saw a black bear and a cub 
close distance. Mm -hmm. You know what's weird? They're the same color everywhere. What's you that? Go, goats. They're oh, always yeah. bright white. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought maybe there'd be a little bit of, you know, a sheep. There's some the doll, and then yeah. there's some variation in the species, obviously. But anyway, I just, I don't know. And then you see ptarmigan. Like, they change color with seasons and yeah. snowshoe hair. doesn't matter if you're um, in a hot, dry climate or northern BC. Mountain goat's just white. Yeah. Yeah. Not great on their behalf in this no. type of terrain. And in wintertime, obviously, it's a little better. But yeah. They stick out like a sore thumb, man. Holy cow. Yeah. And then uh, we crawled through the canyon and found a good spot to set up camp. Uh, it was actually pretty cool this morning. Like cold. Yeah, it was. And it's uh, As soon as the sun goes down, it's crazy how cold it gets. And then um, kind of continues down that path until morning. And yeah. then once the sun comes up, it's... It's just huge variations in temperature, and it's mid-September. Yeah, that's one of the, probably the bigger challenges about hunting this time of year is you almost have to bring more clothing, in, mm -hmm. a, in a sense, because you're prepared for, like, crazy hot conditions, super cold in the morning and at night. Yeah. There's not really like a comfortable middle ground. You get like a couple hours in the morning where it's nice and then a couple in the evening. Yeah. Like right now, it's finally cooling off a little bit. Yeah, I mean, so <clears throat> so far the Merino base layer is getting a workout. Yeah. Um, but then as soon as the sun starts going down, they had another layer. But we haven't really had to use like jackets. No. Only at night. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when you're moving around, like these packs are not light, which we've, we've already mentioned, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, start cold. Yeah. Like real cold. Yeah. You'll heat up in five minutes. Although the, always uh, underestimate that. Yeah, for sure. The tent was pretty warm last night. Yeah. Which is good. Definitely cooled off in the morning though. Yeah. <laughs> Good though. Um, I guess the biggest challenge for today was the lack of water in this area. Yeah. So we looked at a map. And well, before we even came in here, we sort of scouted out where like two possible water sources would be. And there are lakes that, of course, on the map look like they'd be easy to get into. Yeah. Um, although we didn't think it was going to be easy, but it looked like it was a possibility because we've, we've learned from past lessons that you just can't decide until you get in if it's going to be doable or not, right? Yep. So we scoped out the area, <clears throat> looked at some possible ridges to follow to get back to the lakes and decided that it wasn't really the best place to get water. Yeah, so. I think it would be awesome to go back there, but I mean, we're looking at it right now where we have to go, right? Yeah, it'd be a full um, day just to do that, I think. It's rugged, man. It looks like Nevada. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, but anyways, we we headed for a, another lake that was on the trailhead. On As the crow flies, it would have been further to get to the lake that we were going for than the ones that we had scouted out. But because of the terrain, it wasn't doable. So we set off to go to this other lake and we knew that, or we found out there was a, a creek bed that ran through there. And our thoughts was like, no way there's gonna be any water in there because pretty much all the creeks are dry around here. Yeah. But we're kind of crossing our fingers that there'd be something running through there. And as luck would have it, there was water in there and it was moving too slowly yeah. but enough movement that it was clean yeah i guess what i see um it's not a deer i mean to just okay move that out from the equation but i did just see a, a magpie that's a good sign up into that tree right there which is like 150 yards away nice 
Sorry. Yes. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. No, we're our priority is to glass this area, and that's what we're doing while we're talking. Um, but yeah, we, so we found water, and we took advantage of it. We had a nice big lunch. We were able to cook with some water, do some dishes, yep. clean up ourselves a little bit, which is always nice to get some water on your face and shit. Yep. And uh, cleaned everything up, and then filled up every water container we have including two bottles for the dog and our camelbacks and Nalgene bottles. So we're good until tomorrow. Yeah. And I even have enough to do some coffee tonight or, or at some point even right now would be nice, actually. Yeah, our hunt turned into a water quest. Pretty much. This morning. Yeah. Uh, you can only pack in so much water and when your original plan goes down the tube, and there's not a ton of water to choose from. It's kind of, you know, can get a little bit stressful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's another one of those things where you have to go with your gut and say, well, we know there's a guaranteed water source if we head this way, even though it's further. If we commit to going somewhere off the map, well, not off the map, but off the trail, yeah, we could put ourselves in a position where it takes way too long and we don't even get to water, which mm -hmm. means we have to come back out, go to the other water source that we know is there, and we might be in the dark by that point, and we've blown a whole day of hunting just yeah, exactly. looking for water. And if you shoot something back there, it's going to be a oh, bitch man. to get it out. Yeah, so if we had more time, I would definitely go and check that out. I would yeah. travel a lot lighter. Yeah. than we are right now and leave some more stuff back at camp <clears throat> and go check it out but not today and one of the other challenges that we're dealing with is hunting with the dog which yeah. i love having the dog around but i just worry about him because we got to have water for him too yeah and uh yeah i don't know you get into some of this stuff man and, and just this, there's like loose rocks and shale and stuff where a leg can get broken pretty easily on a on an older pup like this one. Yeah. So again, it's just not wise to take any challenges that are gonna put him in danger, and then from there it's gonna put us in danger because we have to pack him out if he gets hurt. So. Yeah. You put him in the meat tray. Yeah. <laughs> the leg sticking out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but he's been good. Other than trying to eat our lunches, he's he's a good hunter. Yeah, he took the last bite of my honey stinger. <laughs> Just snatched it right on my hand. I think he was hurting for food there. <laughs> I think uh, we were all dehydrated and yeah. fucking hungry. So, um, when we came up here onto this glassing hill. Um, stumbled onto a pretty nice shed, mm -hmm. um, a huge one actually. So I don't know, man. I, like I'm wondering if this would be winter range for him. I think so. But Based on because there's a lot of elk droppings too. I noticed in back and behind us and stuff here. So I bet you like come November, December. I bet you it's just like a fucking nightclub in here, just yeah. bumping. But, uh, I don't know, I think that seeing the three mealy does was a, I don't know, indicator that there's life. I don't know if that necessarily means there's going to be any box back here, but... Mm -hmm. Well, they can't be too far. Yeah, exactly. they got to be around. Um, and the temps are getting cooler. We're higher up, and we've seen bucks early September in pretty crazy heat like mm -hmm. mid 20s so you know the theory is yeah they're still gonna be up high but sometimes you just get lucky and you stumble across a big bachelor group of bucks yeah right you just, you just never know man so i kind of feel like they're uh hanging on the edge of this there's kind of a another canyon here and as the hill drops off into the canyon, there's a, some thick timber, mm -hmm. pines. 
Um, so I kind of feel like they're all down there chilling out. That's what I'm hoping. And then I'm hoping that once the sun goes down, they start popping up. I hope so. We're not too far off, man. The sun's dropping pretty quick. Yeah. This, what we're looking at right now, is what I dream about all the off season. Yeah. Like, this is the shit. It's photogenic, that, too. Yeah, man, it's, this is, this is why I hunt, why, why we hunt, I think, yep. man. It's, it really doesn't matter if, if we come home empty-handed tomorrow. Yeah. Like, just to come and sit in a spot like this where there's absolutely nobody around for miles. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Just the three of us. That yeah. including the dog. <laughs> He's number three. Um, yeah, it's incredible. It just kind of transport you to... Uh, you feel like you go back in time in areas like this. Yeah, for sure. Th that are untouched by logging. And the only people who come in here are either coming in on foot or on a horse. And that's it. Yeah, the people that work for it. Yeah, so... That's the, that's the thing, you get a reward, right? Totally, man. If you put I the wish. work in, then you get something that most people don't get to see. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when you're in areas like this, you realize that it's important to protect this shit and that there should be more of it, man. Yeah, for sure. And if you could just take random people and just, like, transport them to where we're sitting right now, it would blow their mind. Yeah. If you just grab somebody from the middle of a downtown in a big city and just sat them on a chair here. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of people are missing out. Definitely. So that's one of the things you get from being out here, man. It just makes you feel grateful that we can you know, drive a reasonable distance to get here, a couple hours, be on a trailhead. It just so we can actually so get here. Up. Yeah. Pretty Their lucky. Own feet. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, and like when you look at the map, sometimes it's a bit daunting, and you look at your pack, and it's pretty heavy, but it's not impossible. No. And the rewards are pretty big. Now, if we got an elk back here, Oof. that would be near, nearing impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but not impossible. Yeah. Not fun. Not fun, no. But uh, would be pretty awesome. And make for some good podcast, Cal. Yeah, I feel like we'd have to eat one of the quarters here. <laughs> yeah. Um, that kind of brings me to my next bullet point here. Do you know what that is? No. <laughs> we wrote farts because uh, <laughs> there's been a few of those. And I think one of the, the things you have to prepare yourself for coming out here and, and totally switching your diet to whatever you can pack is kind of a shock to your system. And I think somebody, I can't remember who mentioned it on the podcast, but just yeah eat that eat it before you go yeah get, get your body ready. ready man because to switch to eating dried stuff and like i brought a bunch of uh lots of carbs and yeah carbs and, and meat and dried fruit <clears throat> yeah. not much bars and yeah lots of sugar so you're like basically eating cement mix yeah and uh yeah that could go both ways could <laughs> And that's same same cause, but <laughs> it's all got to come out one way or another. Yeah, man. You got to be careful with that, and you got to drink lots of water. Too. Yeah. So, anyways, it's just unpleasant, but something worth considering if you're going into the backcountry that you need to yeah think about that drastic change in your diet if it is a big change. Yeah. And. Uh, Expect a few farts along the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, work yourself up. Yeah. Mountain house every Thursday. Oof. Mountain house every two, like two days a week, and then yeah, and then boom. 
Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think I could do it. I'm not no. a big fan of any packaged meal, to be honest. No. But they are pretty essential. Yeah. Whether you're doing them yourself or not, it's kind of like that dried stuff is pretty... Yeah, pretty and good. I didn't do any because I knew we, we were going to be kind of hooped for water. And when I do my dehydrated meals, I need to have quite a bit of water and the ability to clean yeah. my pots out and shit like that. Yeah. So I didn't bring any pasta or rices or anything like that. I, it's only a couple of days, so I'm kind of living on the uh, tortilla and dried fruit diet for the couple of days that we're in here. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of regretting it, but it is what it is. That's where the... Um you know, mountain house or alpine air or whatever you want to bring in um, can sometimes work out because you don't have to clean anything. You just got to get rid of the bag. Yeah. Just pour the water in. And it, you don't need as much water because it, it just steams it. Yeah. Or if you can get similar bags for homemade oh, that's a good dehydrated because you're using the steam more so than just, you know, a yeah, liter yeah. of water, right? Yeah, for sure. C to cook some pasta or whatever. That's going to lie down. Hey, go back to sleep. Yeah. Anything you change for equipment? Uh, I've been packing around this lightweight synthetic hoodie, um, puffy kind of a thing. Yeah. Which I don't think I needed it on this hunt. I didn't take the big down one. Um, Good call. Yeah, yeah, I, I was looking at one. I've got that. Fjall Raven puffy. That is nice in the fall, but yeah, uh, yeah I ditched it. It turns out that it doesn't matter how many days you spend out here, your pack's going to be heavy. Yeah. And I think it has a lot to do with the water, because as soon as we picked I brought like four liters of water out of that creek. My pack was super heavy again. Yeah. But you definitely notice it. That's the beauty of being able to camp at a water source. Yeah. Because you only need to bring what you need. You don't need to stockpile it for two days. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, any other equipment stuff? Um, I'm pretty good well, at Well, my this. alcohol sounds sick. Yeah, that thing. Uh, and I don't think it's just me. No, I think that reed sounds like it's... Pooped. It looks a little uh, wrecked. But we've tried a couple calls and kind of managed to get something half-ass out there. Yeah. No answers. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, no, the pack's working. Clothing's working. Um... Yeah, I don't. I bar so this chair has been great so far, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I really like having the ability to throw the binos on the tripod, especially yeah, in an area nice, like this. A nice addition. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, this it's why I was so confused when I was packing this heavy thing in. I don't feel like I really took anything more than like I didn't get excessive with packing. Mm -hmm. And it still seemed like I had a shit ton of stuff. Yeah. But, um, so I don't think I would change too much. Okay. I might try some different food next time. Yeah, I'll have to reconsider my, for like a shorter hunt, what I'm going to bring. And this was also kind of just like last minute hunt a little bit. And I was working the day that we came, so I just like... Oh, I just got to throw enough food in this bag and survive. Ten pounds of pepperoni. Pretty much. Yeah. I could eat pepperoni all day. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with pepperoni. And uh, my favorite, dried mango. That's always good. Yeah. I could use some vegetables of some sort. Oscar, I got to tape up that fucking... Veggie tag. tray? Come here, bud. <laughs> um, you bring the veggie tray in? Oh yeah, we've talked about my water filter before. But I love that thing, man. 
Yep. So Catadine Hiker Pro, and we filled up all of our shit. You yep. had your water filter too, but this one's just easier to. Yeah, it's easier to keep filling rather than. The one I got was just a. Um, it's called Catadine Be Free. Yeah. And uh, it's basically just a soft, um, non breakable bag. And then it has a tube type filter in the nozzle, mm -hmm. um, similar to the Sawyer, which I can't find, I don't know why. Um, so it works good, it's just, you know, you basically scoop up the water and that into the dirty bag, and then you gotta squeeze it out. Either you drink it right out of the thing, or you, right. um, you squeeze it into your other bladders or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, to fill up like four liters of stuff, with the one you have is much easier. Yeah, it's fast. Yeah, so especially if um, if you've got a hunting partner, partner or a spouse that you go out with a lot, yeah, kind of takes care of two people, no problem. So worth checking out, but it's bigger. That's the only downside. But mm -hmm. I think the size outweighs the weight. Or the, uh, I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say. <laughs> the usefulness. The usefulness of it. Yeah, it's, it saved us a couple times mm -hmm. up north, too. Yeah, man, for sure. But, yeah, I don't know, man. I almost feel like my energy level is just about 50% right now. Yeah? Yeah, I just put a lot of miles on the boots and up and down. And it's nice to sit here and... Take in the breeze and the view. Mm -hmm. I noticed that the wind changed, and it's it, not necessarily it died in down. Our, eh? Well, it's coming from behind us now too, which isn't great. We might have to reconsider. But this shadow is getting longer and longer inside the bowl here. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see some action here. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Anything else you want to add? Cal. Yeah, uh, nope. I wish these helicopters and planes that keep buzzing over top of us would piss off. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing, but... Shortcut. Yeah. <laughs> they're pretty low, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, the helicopter's pretty disturbing. I, there was a jet that flew over us. Yeah. And low enough that I could see all the windows, and I was having a shit on a log. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm pretty sure they, if somebody was looking out the window, they probably would have saw my white ass glowing from up there. I gave them a wave. <clears throat> Private jet. You think you, you got some privacy out here and you can just do your business, but apparently not. Yeah. Musicians flying into town. Or what? <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully somebody got a laugh out of it at least. Anyways, that's enough. You shit are wearing talk. your camel hat. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we should probably shut up and just keep glassing here because things might start moving along here pretty quick. Yeah, it's kind of it's hard to talk quietly. Yeah, it is. As you're podcasting, but yeah, you're we're also used waiting to, for a uh, deer to pop up. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, let's shut this thing off and see what happens. Okay. So that was our final conversation from the field. We hit some. Bad weather the following day, so recording wasn't much of an option, and uh, we were on our way out. But uh, we're going to give you an update on what happened on day three next week, so please tune in. We'll see you guys then. Cheers. This episode of Rookie Hunter was also brought to you by North Arm Knives. North Arm Knives are handcrafted and sold directly through a father and son team right here in British Columbia. Choose from a selection of outdoor knives, kitchen knives, and custom engravings from northarmknives.com. They ship internationally and guarantee all of their work. Kelly and I have put their products to the ultimate test and give them our stamp of approval. Head over to northarmknives.com.